So this is just going to be a very informal video of the DVR from the SharkBite system. When I first powered this thing on inside, it was super underwhelming. I was actually really disappointed. And then I took it outside, set it on the table, and when I put the goggles on, I was instantly struck with how good it was. And you'll see me, as I take off from this table, I usually hit left and just absolutely rip it through these trees. And I just had to slow down. You see me really slow down here. As I see the branches, I see the leaves on this tree, and I kind of just lazily go through it and float through this branch because I mean I could there was you can see every single detail and another thing that kind of struck me was the lack of latency between this and the DJI system the DJI system you kind of feel disconnected feel disjointed from your flight because there is that that strange inconsistent latency and here I go through these branches have no issue whatsoever usually I wouldn't do that because of all those little tiny twigs sticking out Here I'm going around the house, and this is just kind of your range test and penetration test between buildings. And I have to say that on the analog, about right here, I would be experiencing a lot more breakup. And I have the TBS high voltage. So, I mean, I've got plenty of power to go through this kind of stuff. But here, no problem pushing through that static. And then I round the corner, and there's no issue whatsoever. And here I included this because this little tree stump is probably only about six inches wide and have no issue hitting it because I can see every little detail. Okay, here you see me go back through this tree. Again, have no issue. And then I go back behind here. And normally that's Scraggle Central, so I would not ever attempt that. But again, you can see every bit of everything. And here I do a few little high-speed whips around the tree just to test that latency factor again, and it's fantastic. So as I crest this tree and head up over the eave of the house, the clarity on that sky was amazing. And I, I can't put to words just how much better this looks in the actual goggles themselves. So again, a few little high-speed maneuvers just to test the latency. Now here we're going to a much more difficult situation and this is right outside my office building and you can see that it has some static, it has some, some breakup but on the analog system when I fly here it is unbelievably saturated with that static. I mean it's so bad here, so much interference here that my DJI drones cannot fly, they can't take off. I have to do um, the magnetic compass recalibration about three or four times before I can even remotely take off and even then I still get a lot of drift but here that's the worst it gets and it's still manageable so if you're looking at probably the most difficult thing for this FPV system to do it can do it just fine so here I'm just kind of having some fun trying to push it a little bit further away from me just to see how badly it breaks up. Inside here as I round these corners, this is usually just snow on my DVR and what I'm seeing here is just perfectly clear. Okay, so here is kind of just a really, really informal night flight that I did just to test how good this thing does in low light situations. And as you can see, I mean, I'll let you guys make the judgment on this one. I thought it was flyable. Uh, as I get into the much more dark areas, it has a little bit of trouble transitioning from the low light to the almost zero light. So you can see it when it flips over into the, the super high uh, ISO. You'll see a lot more of that, the pattern break up there from the actual sensor itself. and. Like I said, this right here was really, really dark. Like, I, I wouldn't have walked this because I would have been tripping all over everything and, and not being able to see. But here, you can see that it's, it's flyable. You have to slow down, but it's definitely flyable.
So here's where it started to get a little bit uncomfortably dark, plus the breakup made it a lot more difficult to fly. If I didn't know this area as well as I do, I probably wouldn't have been able to do it. Okay, so now here's where we do the long range test, and I have to disappoint some people that it didn't end well. This here, I'm under a metal awning, which is probably the least favorable condition as far as getting long range reception. But at the end of the video, you're going to see why it was really, really disappointing. But here you can see I take off, and again, the DVR footage does not do the actual, what well, you're actually seeing justice. But here I'm probably about a quarter mile away, and as I approach the highway, it's off in the distance, I get to nearly three quarters of a mile, almost a mile away, and there's almost no breakup. And again, remember, I'm under that metal awning, which is not a favorable condition when it comes to long-range flight. So I get a little bit of breakup here, and I, I just keep pushing through it, and I just want to see how far I can go. See, right there, I start to get a little bit of static, but it clears up, so I turn right back around and try to push a little bit further. Still doing good, still doing good. So as I look on it on Google Maps, this is almost a mile away. And you can see, absolutely no issue. A little bit of static, not bad. But then this happens and that's it that was the end of that flight and ended up crashing but what I will say is I don't think that that was anything to do with reception I don't think that that had anything to do with the distance I don't think there was any interference when I got the quad when I retrieved the quad there was actually a capacitor on the board itself that was melted off. Now, in the reviews and other people's reviews, you'll see that this thing generates a ton of heat. In the instructions, they say do not put it anywhere near the top of your stack where it's um, close to the, the top plate on your, on your quad. And the reason for that is it has to have lots and lots and lots of air passing through there and dissipating some of that heat. And if I'm completely honest, this was outside the aircraft. The VTX, because I only had the 8 centimeter cable, I had to put it on the outside of the aircraft, meaning it had worlds of air to dissipate some of that heat. So, do I recommend this system? I absolutely do. I, even with that being an issue, even with the VTX failure, I can still recommend this system because the clarity is so much better. And I really do believe that it was probably, because this was the first series of those VTXs, it probably did not have the same quality control that going forward they're going to have. So can I recommend this system? Without a question, I can recommend the system. Go out, get it, enjoy it. It is way better than the DVR footage you're seeing online, especially for me. I have the HDO2s, which have plenty of clarity, and it's got the OLED screens, which make it just even more vibrant and crisp and nice. So absolutely recommend it, but I hope that Fat Shark does possibly fix what I perceive to be a bad capacitor on that VTX board. Hope you guys enjoyed this. All right, so listen, as I have stated before, the most valuable thing you could possibly buy for your quad is a beeper. I basically just walked half mile to a mile and I get about a quarter mile away and I'm already hearing it beep, so get yourself a beeper, especially if you're going to do some distance testing.